North Carolina Law Review, Volume 14, Number 4, Article 2, the 1st of June 1936. Federally owned corporations and their legal problems. Robert H. Schnell. Follow this and additional works at http colon slash slash scholarship dot law dot unc dot edu slash nclr Heart of the Law Commons This article is brought to you for free and open access by Carolina Law Scholarship Repository. It has been accepted for inclusion in North Carolina Law Review by an authorized administrator of Carolina Law Scholarship Repository. For more information, please contact law underscore repository at unc.edu recommended citation Robert H. Schnell, Federally Owned Corporations and Their Legal Problems, 14 NC. L. Rev. 337, 1936. Available at http colon slash slash scholarship dot law dot unc dot edu slash nclr slash volume 14 slash is 4 slash 2. Federally owned corporations and their legal problems. Rob at h s c h a n e l l i v the extensive operations of the government corporations makes the question of their taxation one of prime importance. To what extent are the states and municipalities to be denied tax revenue on properties taken over by the corporations, properties which heretofore have yielded fairly substantial sums? To what extent should the federal government permit taxation, and thus partial control, of its instrumentalities? The doctrine that a state may not impose taxes upon instrumentalities of the federal government was first expounded in McCulloch v. Maryland, one involving a state tax on banknotes issued by the Second Bank of the United States, a forerunner of the present-day federal corporations, although it differed from those now under discussion in that its stock was not owned by the federal government. This case was followed by Osborne v. BMK of the United States II which declared unconstitutional a state law imposing a franchise tax on the Bank of the United States. This broad proposition that no state has a right to tax the means employed by the federal government for the execution of its powers was limited by the case of Thompson v. Pacific Railroads in which a state tax upon property of a state incorporated railroad, which was subsidized by Congress and operated under federal statutes, was held invalid. The court gave recognition to the doctrine, but also said, we think there is a clear distinction between the means employed by the government and the property of agents employed by the government. Taxation of the agency is taxation of the means, taxation of the property of the agent is not always, or generally, taxation of the means. For Railroad Company v. Peniston 5 clarified this distinction while holding that a state could impose a tax even upon the property of a railroad chartered by Congress but not a tax upon its operations. It was said that a state tax on the property would in no way hinder the exercise of any powers of the federal government. California v. Central Pacific Railroad Company 6 Sterling Fellow in Law, Yale University, 1934-35. For the first installment of this article C193614 N. C. L. Rev. 238-117 U. S. 316-4 L. Ed. 579-1819. 222-U. S. 738, 6 L. Ed. 204, 1824. 276 U. S. 579, 19 L. Ed. 792, 1869. 76 U. S. 579, 591, 19 L. Ed. 792, 798, 1869. 85 U. S. 5, 21 L. Ed. 787, 1873. 127 U. S. 1, 8 Sup. Court. 1073, 32 L. Ed. 150, 1887. The North Carolina Law Review. Also held that a state could not impose a franchise tax on a corporation chartered by Congress, 
but added that a state may undoubtedly tax outside visible property of the company situated within the state. 7. As respects national banks, which receive their charters from the controller of the currency as authorized by an act of Congress, 8 Owensboro National Bank v. Owensboro, 9 reviewing the cases up to then, held that states cannot levy any tax, either direct or indirect, upon the national banks, their property, assets or franchises, except as permitted by congressional legislation. Point one degrees. Williams v. City of Talladega 1 involved a municipal privilege tax levied upon the Western Union Telegraph Company, a corporation organized under the laws of the state of New York and doing a private business but also operating in accordance with certain federal statutes 12 and engaged in governmental activities. The tax was declared invalid because it made no exemption of that business which was governmental, in character. The constitutionality of federal land banks and joint stock land banks, authorized by an act of Congress, 13 was upheld in Smith v. Kansas City Title and Trust Company 14 in which the court reaffirmed the rule that a state may not tax federal instrumentalities except as permitted by Congress and upheld the power of Congress to declare the bonds issued by these banks exempt from state taxation. A tax upon the recordation of mortgages was declared invalid as applied to mortgages owned by federal land banks in Federal Land Bank of New Orleans v. Crossland.15 The court held that the state was entitled to charge a reasonable fee to meet the expenses of registration but that a tax in the guise of a registration fee could not be imposed. Upon the bank. In summary, these cases stand for the general proposition that a state may not tax the franchises, operations, and intangibles of a corporation, which is acting as a federal I instrumentality because such tax might tend to interfere with its performance of its governmental functions, but that taxation of the tangible property of a corporation, incorporated either. One twenty seven U S. 1, 40, 8 sup. Court 1073, 1080, 32 L. Ed. 150, 157, 1887. 813 Stat. 100, 1864, 12 U. S. C. A. Section 21 at Seek. 1926, 173 U. S. 664, 19 sup. Court 537, 43 L. Ed. Eight fifty eighteen ninety nine one hundred seventy three U S six hundred sixty four six hundred sixty eight nineteen sub court five hundred thirty seven five hundred thirty eight forty three L eight hundred fifty eight hundred fifty two eighteen ninety nine two hundred twenty six U S four hundred four thirty three sub court one hundred sixteen fifty seven L eight two hundred seventy five nineteen twelve 114 Stat. 221 1866 47 U. S. C. A. Section 1 at Seek. Nineteen twenty six one thirty nine Stat. 362 1916 12 U. S. C. A. Section 671 at Seek. 1926 39 Stat. 374 1916 12 U. S. C. A. Section 811 at Seek. 1926. 1255 U. S. 180. 41 Sup. Court 243. 65 L. Ed. 577 1921. 1261 U. S. 374. 43 Sup. Court 385, 67 L. Ed. 703, 1923. Federally owned corporations 339. Under state or federal laws, acting as a federal agent is permissible when such agent is engaged in business for private profit. 16. Although none of these cases involve a completely federally owned corporation such as those under discussion, they are important as setting forth the principles of state taxation which have been applied to the prototypes of the present-day corporations and will be applied to them.
Cases involving taxation of federally owned corporations first arose after the World War when questions concerning the wartime corporations came to be litigated. In the first taxation case involving the wartime corporations owned by the federal government, a Maryland District Court held that the Emergency Fleet Corporation was a governmental agency, exclusively employed in governmental work, and as such its property was not liable to state taxation. Point one seven a tax levied by Baltimore County, Maryland on land standing in the name of the Fleet Corporation and on certain ships, shipyard shops and appurtenances, which were to all effects the property of the corporation although they were on land belonging to a private shipbuilding company, was declared void and its collection enjoined in a suit in which the United States appeared as plaintiff. No precedents were cited in the decision. This decision was followed in the case of United States Housing Corporation v. City of Watertown.18 The court, taking cognizance of the Thompson and Peniston cases, held that a tax upon property owned by the housing corporation was invalid, saying, in the instant case the property itself was the only means and instrumentality by which the federal purpose could be carried out, and to tax this property would be to tax an agency solely engaged in carrying out the constitutional duties of the general government. It would be a tax on the means employed to carry out a federal power, and this, Dot the municipality had no right to do, nine an injunction was issued restraining the collection of taxes levied on the property of the corporation.